Astronomers say they've discovered, quote, the strongest evidence yet of life on a distant planet, although they stress more research is needed. Using NASA's James Webb Telescope, researchers with Cambridge University in England examined planet K218b. It's two and a half times the size of Earth and 124 light years away, or roughly 700 trillion miles. Scientists found evidence of two key chemicals in the planet's atmosphere that suggest life. It's because here on Earth, they're only produced by living organisms, mostly by small marine algae. Now, the study's lead author told CBS News that despite not having a definitive answer on the presence of life, these findings are a step in the right direction. Even the very fact that we are seeing these hints means we now have the technological capability to detect such molecules in these atmospheres, which, which is again a major transformation in our understanding and in our capability to study these uh, ha potentially habitable worlds. Derek Pitts joins us now. He's the Chief Astronomer and Planetarium Director of the Franklin Institute. So look, we know more research is needed, but what do you take this to mean? What I take it to mean is that we've taken great steps forward in our ability to detect molecules like this in the atmospheres of distant planets. It tells us that our instrumentation has the resolution to be able to give us what we need to make these kinds of studies. And this is all part and parcel of our desire to want to find out if there's life anywhere else in the universe. So this is a big step forward for the instrumentation and our ability to interpret the data. Are there other possible explanations for the presence of these chemicals other than possible life? Yeah, there are, there are other possibilities. The question is, can we isolate all of them and separate all of them out and be definitive that the reason why we see these organic molecules at this planet is because of the presence of some form of life. So that's part of the extra work that has to be done to sort of really clear this up and figure out what's going on. Why do some scientists find this research and the possibility of life on this planet in general a bit questionable? Well, they find it questionable because, you know, right now we're looking at a, an organic molecule that we know comes from the processes of life on Earth, but we're talking about a very exotic exoplanet that could have an environment that's either molten magma with a very rich hydrogen atmosphere or it's a very warm liquid water ocean planet with a slight hydrogen atmosphere. So that's a lot of range that has to be determined what kind of planet it really is. So we have to figure that out first. Then we have to determine exactly, not exactly, but how much of this chemical is there, and then be able to figure out what the real process is. Remember, we haven't seen any life form there. We're not going to see any life form there for a very long time. So it's a good reason to be skeptical yet be appreciative of the fact that we've been able to gather this data. Thinking of the tidal wave planet on Interstellar that, that could not support life at all. Not, not real. It's a movie. I, I understand that. All right. So there are clearly a lot of challenges, though. This is 124 light years away. Yes, that's right, 124 light years away. So it's not that far in galactic terms. I mean, it's certainly it's you know so much farther than the most closest planet to us. But at the same time, at 120 light years, 124 light years away, we're able to gather this information with a high degree of resolution and, and, and accuracy. And that's really a testimony to the instruments that we're using and the brilliant researchers that are devising these instruments that allow us to gather this information. I mean, just imagine, it's a planet two and a half times the size of Earth at 124 light years away. In the sky, it's tiny, absolutely pinpoint tiny. So for our instrumentation <laughs> to do this well, it's incredible. You always boggle my mind, Derek Pitts. Thank you.